Hey everyone, this is Gavin from Meridian Training and Consulting. Knowing that the market has changed in the way people look for information and the way people buy, it's important to understand that the role of the salesperson has also shifted and really moved away from being a transaction assistant or a checkout chick towards being a decision making coach. Now a coach is someone who understands you and motivates you to do the best job that you can. A decision-making coach is someone who gets to know you and motivates you towards buying the right purchase that is right for you. So that is matching the right product with the right customer, not simply processing the payment at the end. Now, 82% of all retail purchases actually begin in the online space. If you think about it for yourself, apart from impulse items, if you're thinking about buying something, you usually start with a Google. So if I'm going to the races in a weekend or a weekend and a half, I might think, I don't want to actually wear all of my work ties. I might buy something new. So I'll go onto Google and I say to myself, I want a yellow tie. Now, now Googling and looking in the online space in online stores, I'll get a sense of how hard or how easy this is. I might keep looking and realize there aren't very many for sale or this, the, the, the stock might be limited or the choices might be limited. It will also give me an idea of price. Now, if I've looked and I've found a great yellow tie, which is exactly the yellow that I wanted for a price that I want, and it will arrive before the races, everything has lined up, I'm likely to purchase. But if one of those things hasn't lined up, the yellow is not exactly what I want, or I'm not entirely sure of the price, or it may not get here in time, that's when I'll find myself going to a retail outlet and shopping in a person-to-person -person space. Now, this is excellent news for anybody that works in retail because that means that over 80%, the majority of people have, that are coming in have already made the decision that they want to buy. But if the salesperson acts as a transaction assistant or a checkout chick, apart from being a decision-making coach, that's where they'll find that the sale isn't that easy, even though it should be easier than ever. So a transaction accountant or a checkout chick is really someone who asks information questions like, you know, what is it that you're looking for? They're quite closed and they're looking for specifics. So if I come in and someone says, what is it that you're looking for today? And I say a yellow tie. They've asked me for information. I've given it to them. This person has to now have a yellow tie in order to move the sale forward. And they might not. I mean, I haven't seen very many. So if they go, we don't have one, it leaves both the seller and the buyer a little bit empty. Like, I wanted to buy something today and you haven't been able to help me, but they haven't been able to sell you anything because they don't have yellow ties, thinking that that was the be-all and end-all. Even if they do have a yellow tie and they say, we've got one, and I look at it and go, well, this actually isn't the, the yellow that I was thinking or it's a little bit more expensive than the one that I found, the seller and the buyer are also at odds because the seller can't help me buy. Now, a decision-making coach is really understanding why people have made those choices. It's more human. If you think about it, this would be how you would talk to one of your friends that was looking to purchase. If your best friend said to you, I want to buy a yellow tire, you wouldn't say, here's one, do you want it, yes or no? You would actually explore as to why on earth they would choose a yellow tire. Like, were you drunk when you decided? How did you come up with yellow? And that's some of the questions that I can think we can, maybe not the drunk question, but you could say, well, what is it that inspired yellow? Uh, or tell me a little bit about what statement this outfit is trying to make. Or, you know, when you were thinking, you know, I want to go to X, Y, Z, like, you know, how did you form your opinions? Like, what are your reasons behind choosing X, Y, and Z? To really get to the heart of why someone has made a decision. And you get to find some really interesting answers. It might be something simple, like, I just wanted to wear something summery or springy to the racing carnival, and I thought yellow. In which case, you can help me find something that's summery and springy without it actually being yellow. Like you might go, well, there isn't actually yellow, but we have a range of beautiful spring colours that you might want to choose from. Like, why don't we have a look at blah, 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 and then move them towards something that would still give them the sensation that they were looking for, but isn't necessarily a yellow tie. Uh, or it might be something a little bit more deep, like maybe they're going to Daffodil Day and they really wanted to show their support by wearing something yellow. 
even if you don't have a yellow tie, you might still be able to help them by something that gives them the, gives them the sensation of what they're looking for. So we don't have yellow ties, but what we do have are these beautiful cufflinks that have a yellow stone. So even though it's not as bold of a statement that you were trying to make for Daffodil Day, I think that it's quite a classy way of really showing your support to a worthy cause. Like you can still help someone get the sensation of, yes, that's really why I was choosing to buy a yellow tie and, and buy, be able to buy something and still feel good about it, not go, I didn't have what I wanted, now I'm not going to be able to have the sensation that I was looking for. So today's challenge is, how can you create some questions to really understand what people's reasons to buy are? Think about if you had friends that were coming in and they said they wanted something, how would you explore what it is that's really important to them in a human way, not just ask them for information of what they want so that you're left holding either information that they do or don't want, you can actually help them by A or B. So even if you don't have what it is, you have an, an, another option that might still be suitable. So chat with your colleagues, talk about how you would talk about it with your friends, practice your sentences and then go live and see what your engagement is like when you start really being more human and understanding what your clients are looking for and then decision making coach them towards a purchase. If you have any questions, if you like this video, if you think it's important for other people, please feel free to share or to like. You're welcome to start a conversation on the, the, the YouTube page or our Facebook page. Uh, or if you want to make direct contact, you can contact us at www.aridian.com.au. I look forward to hearing from you.